What's up, folks? We's at Kranji today. Uh, it's nice and warm out. Well, it's not nice and warm. It's actually freaking hot. But, yeah. It rained really heavily yesterday. I don't know if it rained in Kranji, but... Uh, oh, something on my... Yeah. Ah, much better. Okay, so I hope I hope the rain yesterday didn't affect Kranji, but we're here today. I'm gonna go get set up and I'll catch you on the water. Kranji, water looks uh, pretty decent from here. Let's see what it looks like when we get closer. Oh yeah, water's good. Water's about a 7, 8 out of 10 for Kranji levels. It looks like uh, it'll get really bad tomorrow. So, might have just come right, right in time. I'm going to start with the top waters first, even though I know that uh, from my experiences at Kranji that this isn't quite the right time for top waters. Uh, top waters are better in Kranji uh, towards the end of the day, uh, at last light. And it's usually only good if the waters are, uh, the water conditions are good. And today is acceptable, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. We'll start off with top waters and I'll make a change if I need to. So the, the key thing about working crunchy and top waters is you really want to work that, uh, that top water as close to the bank as possible. It's kind of like kalang. You know, sometimes it might feel like you're working it um, illogically close. You know, just a little bit too close and it's like, can the fish even fit there? And believe me, too close is where you want to be. I mean, obviously you don't want to be on the bank or in the middle of the weeds that are next to the bank unless you're using some sort of a weedless setup like a weedless frog or something but you want to be pretty damn close as close as possible without hooking into the weeds now, the reason for that is pretty simple you have the weed line that you have to drop off and the fish are going to be hiding in a drop off and it's very um, common to think that oh you know if they're hiding at the drop off and I, and I work my lure right at the drop off on top of their heads they're going to come hit it but then again, you've got to think of it as part of nature. That is not the natural way something on the top would present itself. Something on the top of the water would present itself from the bank. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so if, you know, any frog or lizard or little critter that comes down, it's going to come down from the bank and it's going to enter from here. So it's going to start off pretty close to the bank. And if you just chuck your lure right on top of the fish's nose, right out there like that, right? That's not going to look very natural. It's not that you're not going to get any bites. You know, you very well might get some bites, but that's just not a very natural presentation of a top water. And cast it right there. See that? Parallel to the bank, right about half a meter off the bank. And the fish from the outside, they're going to hear or see it. You know, in fact, this... Um, as much as I like the chubby popper because you can it, it is dual function it's just not noisy enough I need something like the, the chubby pencil to make a little bit of noise when it's on that surface um, the, the chubby popper makes popping sounds but you know it spits and splashes but it's not the kind of noise that I'm looking for I know that I, I'm sure you guys saw that there was a little ripple there so I'm gonna see if I can cross that area close to the bank right where the wood. There we go. You see that? You work it real close to the bank. Oh, 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 oh. 
Oh wow, wow, this guy is really running. I mean, this is an ultralight setup, but still. Wow, oh, oh man, he got me stuck in something. Come on, get yourself out of that. Get yourself out of that. Ooh. You see that changing to that chubby pencil? You know, it's, it makes that, um, that rattling sound as you work it. That could be the difference. It makes all the difference. A, a, a pop versus a rattle sometimes. Oh, fish off. Okay, well, that would have been a nice fish. It was decent size, maybe 30, 30 plus. Uh, looked like it was spawning. Nice small little bait fish. So they're all the bait fish are all hiding up in here. There, again, there has to be a piece of floating algae right there. I felt the thing catch as soon as my lure landed. I mean, it looks clear from here, but there's got to be something there. nest or something get off my shoe okay so earlier I went from a a, a pop chug kind of leo to this rattling style what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the pumping style. Now the reason why I'm referring to this as a popping style lure rather than a popper, even though it is a popper, is because of the way I'm working it. I'm walking this popper the same way I would walk um, my chubby pencil. Except that the difference is a chubby pencil rattles. This one chugs and pops. Oh, he's using a popper fry. Was a bite. Oh my god, he's freaking. He has an entire stringer of fish. Well, now I don't really feel bad. I was gonna avoid him, you know, common angler courtesy, but did you see that, guys? What can you do, right? The Singapore government has no law, no regulation against uh, keeping your catches. There's no bag limit. I mean, they regulate practically everything else, right? It's Singapore, but not the bag limits. You know, you wanna, you catch ten fish, you bring home ten fish. Just what it's like. I see surface activity down there. I'm gonna go check it out, see what's up. See, there's something going on there, guys. I spotted that those ripples from way back there, and the ripples are still going on. I don't know what's going on here.
it's got they gotta be smallies. What is that? What is that? What is that? Come here, come here. Oh it's snakeheads, it's baby snakeheads, no wonder they're so aggressive. Only snakeheads are that aggressive. I'm not scared of anything. Look at that, baby snakehead. Now that's gonna be fun on ultralight tackle for sure. Might have scared them off with that one hit. Snakeheads don't spook easily though. It's this plant is hungrier than the snake heads. Oh, so they're still there. Okay, interesting. just kept coming back so it's got to be a snakehead PBs don't usually do that if it comes back again it's got to be a snakehead Snakeheads are still here. Nope. I'm not gonna get back to eat that, my man. Feels like a small one. Another snakehead. Wow. It's a good thing, it's a good thing. Always nice to see small snakeheads because you know that the population is doing just fine. folks uh, so ground a was was okay uh, so I got that um, I, I got that decent PB that I lost and I think I landed two or is it three uh, juvenile snakeheads so now I'm gonna head over to uh, ground B and do a quick one there and then I gotta go So crunchy ground B is like half the size of crunchy ground A. It's on the basically it's on the opposite side of uh, I'd say the reservoir mouth. Right? So ground A is on that side, ground B is on this side, and it's half the size. I don't usually fish here often, but I usually just do ground A and, and then I'm done be done with it. But yeah, well, no harm trying.
right, so I'm gonna go get set up and I'll catch you guys on the GoPro. Okay, so this is ground B. There we go. Take a look at that map. So I was parked here before and this is ground A. So I basically drove to this car park here and this is ground B. <laughs> In fact, it's like one third the size of ground A. Okay, let's see what we got. Some thick weeds, it's not good. Oh, the weeds do mean that the fish have some cover to hide in. So, if I work that on the edge of the weeds, I might get something. I think it might be easier for me to work the weed line from that side. What is that? Oh guys, what is that? Oh. If it's a snakehead, I'm worried because I'm using an eight pound leader. What is that? It's a freaking snakehead. Okay, I got him on the outside. I got him on the outside. Oh no, it's a Tamensis. Okay, I'm not so scared now. Alright, stay on man, stay on. Come in here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, right at the edge of legal ground B. Look at that. Chomped on my... Ooh, that was almost bad. Chomped on my chubby pencil. Oh, top waters. You see glassy calm. Like glass. This is glass right here. Alright, how am I going to get this guy back into the water? I might have to kind of do a little throw. My GoPro battery kind of died just as I uh, landed the fish, so I think here's a pretty good spot. And there, and there we go, and off you go. Whew! Damn, it's not a really big one, but that take was insane, wasn't it? I freaking love top waters, man. I love top waters. I'm gonna get right back to it. Gotta always check that leader. Huh? Leader feels good, not looks good. See? Glassy calm. Overcast conditions. This is prime top water conditions right here. I see a freaking snakehead right there. Do you see it? You see it? It came up for air. Oh, that guy looks big from here. I don't really want to encounter him even though I kind of do. 8 pound leader, you don't want to mess with uh, giant snake heads with 8 pound leader. Uh, even them uh, little juveniles that I was uh, hitting before, yeah, even those who just kind of... All it takes is for them to swallow the lure and yeah, bye bye. You know what? I'm going to switch to something a bit bigger. Yeah, that's exactly what I'll do. Because I have a telescopic rod with me. Always bring two setups, right? This is not exactly a heavy setup, it's medium light. And in fact, Daiwa lists this particular model as a bait finesse model, but 
still heavier at 6 to 14 pounds it's still heavier than, uh, than that guy I have right there so what I like about this setup right here handle the heavier stuff I can handle the lighter stuff as well Oh, I wasn't even looking when that guy hit. No, 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 don't go in there. Don't go in there. Oh, you gone done it now. No. I'm up here. For a fact this is water so I think yeah this is water I could have let the first one go here off he goes yeah, this little corner is pretty productive I mean it's not the first time I fished this corner but it's productive today at least Alright folks, so that's that's it for today. I think it was a uh, actually it was a pretty productive day. So I hit that, that first one on ground A, lost it before I landed it. I encountered an entire school of uh, juvenile snake uh, giant snake heads. I think I landed a couple. I came over on this side. Thank you, camera. Starting normal recording. Noted. Uh, so that was my that was my in-car camera, by the way. So came over on to this side, ground B. I landed one more Tamensis. I landed one uh, regular peacock bass. At least uh, got some good fishing in today. And yeah, gotta get back to work. So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Share my videos with your friends. If you learned something. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Tight lines, guys.